fact, man. Let me get money since get money. Craziest courtroom moments of all time. This is Jaleel Smith Riley, who is facing charges for murder in Michigan. Smith Riley was involved in an armed robbery on November 16th, 2013 in Norwood, where he and two other men a parked car. Inside the parked car was 20-year-old Portia Brooks and her boyfriend, Aaron Martin. Smith Riley knocked on the window with a handgun and forced Martin, who was in the passenger seat, out of the car. Jaleel then proceeded to go through Aaron's pockets and demanded his cash. Once Jaleel had taken every dollar Aaron What a thug! Ooh, you fucking thug. Aaron had, he then took his life with a shot to the head. Why? Brain damage. However, Jaleel wasn't done there. Right after shooting Aaron, he then leaned into the car and fired at Brooks, who was sitting in the car, twice. And she died three days later. Fortunately, Martin survived the shooting, but sustained serious injury. Before the judge announced the sentence that Jaleel would be facing, Portia's family got the chance to address the jury and the man who took their daughter away from them. Sharon Brooks, Portia's mother, brought the box containing her daughter's ashes to the courtroom, as she had for previous court dates. She stated that Smith Riley had ruined her life and killed her identity as a mother of three. This is what I have left because of his greed, his selfishness, his complete disregard of, and disrespect of others and life. But as you can see, I get nothing back except the reality that she is gone. Tia Marie Brooks, Portia's sister, also spoke emotionally and requested that Smith Riley be handed the maximum sentence. I have to deal with life without Portia, so he should deal with life without, without parole. Then, Aaron, who Jaleel shot in the head, spoke to the court. Oh, she's still here with us, and, and she will always be here. So. She's our angel looking over us, helping us get through these hard times. As if Smith Riley's crime was not outrageous enough, his reaction to his sentence... And he got dreads too. Look at this thug ass nigga. Trial on August 11th, 2021, Smith Riley pleaded guilty to aggravated murder and attempted murder. However, he later decided to withdraw his guilty plea against the advice of his attorneys. Well, from the beginning, this was an emotional day for the families of... Man, that bitch-ass nigga Smith Riley decided to reverse his plea halfway through the sentencing hearing. They were shocked, and his attorneys were, too, in part because it puts the death penalty back on the table. Prior to receiving his sentence, Jaleel was heard apologizing in court as what appeared to be a last attempt at showing remorse. Lord. It gets a little bit too late. Additionally, Jaleel's attorney made a final attempt at saving face. And he knows that he can't go back in time and not do what he did. Despite the Nigga. apologies, Judge Charles Kubicki, presiding over the case in Hamilton County Common Pleas Court, denied Smith Riley's request and sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Yeah, the nigga. old monster that is currently rotting behind bars collapsed to the floor of the courtroom upon receiving his sentence. Smith Riley also received an additional sentence of 11 years for a related attempted murder charge. However bad you think Smith Riley's case was, it can't be compared to the infamous case of TJ Lane. This is TJ Lane. Brought him over here collapsing on the floor, crying and shit to a bunch of people. Nigga, you decided to commit murder for like, what? Probably $120 in a nigga pocket, bro. What you think you about to get out of him? Fucking $200? Like, that's chump change. Anything that's in a nigga pocket? His chump change. That's what you're robbing him. Look like a dickhead. He's facing charges for multiple murders in Ohio. TJ Lane was a convicted American murderer who gained notoriety after committing a horrific crime at Chardon High School in Ohio. On February 27, 2012, the Ohio Police Department responded to multiple calls from teachers and students. I ain't saying rob niggas, but like at least rob a rich nigga or some shit. Like, bro, you, you robbing a, a pedestrian. 
You robbing pedestrian. That nigga don't got no bands on him. Dumbass nigga. It was here that TJ Lane opened fire and killed three students and severely injured three others. Six people got physically harmed at the hands of TJ Lane that day, but hundreds, if not thousands of people left Chardon High School on February 27th, 2012. Why? Intangible pain that will last through eternity. Glances of your friends laying all over the place. There's blood, there's people screaming. Everybody's running in different directions and you're just trying to get out. I saw a kid holding a gun pointed towards a group of kids. Do you remember Fucking threat. on the gunman's face? I never looked at his face. I just looked at the gun. I still can't think about it all because it's just so scary. Lane's actions sent shockwaves through the community. He was swiftly apprehended and charged with three counts of Look at this little nigga. Two counts of attempted aggravated murder and one count of felonious assault. As if the murders were not bad enough, Lane showed no remorse for his actions at the trial and refused to cooperate with his attorneys. Instead, he appeared in court wearing a t-shirt with the word killer written on it and even gave the middle finger to the victim's families. During the sentencing hearing, Lane made a shocking statement. Oh, this little nigga think he tough. Saying pull the trigger, the killer's done. Now it masturbates to memory. Oh. The state. What? Yo. Is this a TV show? This nigga think he in a TV show. Nigga said. Bro, oh, you're never coming out of jail caused outrage and disgust oh, a lot just to get butt fucked in jail like you don't got no guns in jail homie they about to take your butt not only among the families of the victims but also across the entire nation the judge presiding over the case judge david fury described lane's behavior as heinous unprovoked and senseless and sentenced him to three life sentences in prison without parole lane didn't even bat an eyelid when he heard his sentence he remained emotionless and unremorseful Lane's behavior and reactions were likened to that of a psychopath. However, not every convict remained emotionless after hearing their sentence, like in the case of Ryan Stone. This is Ryan Stone. Bro, it's always these, I'm not to be racist, but it's always these little white teenage niggas who's always just, you know, just screw loose, bro. Start wilding this shit with a buzz cut. They start wilding, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I see it. I see, bro. I ain't gonna say nothing who is facing charges for going on a crime splurge throughout the nation, including kidnapping and assault, all of which was captured and broadcasted live by helicopters. The chase began after Stone hijacked a car with a four-year-old boy inside and drove off, leading police on a dangerous pursuit that lasted more than an hour. During the chase, Stone drove up to 100 miles per hour and was reckless in every regard of the word. He's seen here overtaking an innocent civilian on the highway, throwing them out of the car before carrying on in the new vehicle. But that's not all. Watch here as he exits the highway, opens the car door at full speed, then slams onto the brakes right before crashing into another car parked in an intersection. Investigators believe this was a sorry attempt at another carjacking. Stone also crashed into several other vehicles during this chase, causing numerous injuries. At one point, he even came inches from taking out a policeman who was trying to play stop sticks on the highway. He eventually oh my God. Stolen car he almost sent that car to the gulag. Yo. Yo, he almost sent that nigga to the gulag, bro. Where are you running to, bro? However, he was quickly apprehended by police and placed in a holding cell. As if Stone's actions weren't bad enough, he was caught on tape Look at him. about his actions to a friend who visited him in the cell. Hey, did you know I made the news in the UK and Australia? What? Yeah, my lawyer told me I made the news in the UK and Australia. If you type in Grand Theft Auto on YouTube, my shit comes up first. Ryan also All that just to come up on fucking YouTube? Type in Grand Theft Auto on YouTube. My Nigga, all that just to come up on YouTube. You wanted to come up on YouTube that bad? Nigga, all I gotta do is type in I am Gaza and I'm there, nigga.
You did that. You did that just to get typed up on on YouTube. Sorry to tell you, nigga, I'm already there. You could have just. You could have just made some content. You over here killing people, kidnapping niggas. What you doing, bro? My shit comes up first. White people. Bro. Ryan also believed that he should be compensated for his viral car chase because the news channels are using his car chase footage. I'm gonna contact Council News or have you contact Council News or somebody. <laughs> You guys are getting paid using my name. Stone was charged with 26 crimes involving kidnapping. Buddy thinks he's making content. Buddy, you don't have no LLC, buddy. What? Talking about some y'all making money off of my off of me. Nigga, you moving like this is content. Nigga, you ain't no content creator. What the f Bro, my brain. This nigga's lazed. Vehicle theft assault and eluding police stone sentencing hearing was emotional in court many of his victims and their families can be heard speaking about the impact of his crimes on their lives some spoke of physical injuries they had sustained in the crash while others described the emotional trauma they had experienced due to the incident stone spoke at the hearing he cried expressed remorse for his actions and apologized to his victims isn't it ironic that in the same week Ryan was captured in the video on the left, laughing and boasting about his crimes. And on the other video on the right, he seemed crying and begging for sympathy from the court as he finally realized the severity of his actions. Nigga, he could suck a apology, dick. The judge in the case was unmoved, noting that Stone had shown a pattern of criminal behavior and that he posed You're a criminal. society. You dug down the maximum sentence possible. Stone pleaded guilty to five charges and was sentenced five to years? 160 years in prison without the possibility of parole. Stone was in tears when he learned he'd spend the rest of his life in prison. Stone blamed his actions on drugs and his show of remorse might be sincere. However, No, 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 no. Do not blame no goddamn drugs for you being a thug. Fucking thug ass. Ooh. Know what you are. The weed. The LSD, the whatever, it does not possess you to commit murder or kidnap. I promise you, bro. That's just all within your head. You feel me? Like, why would you, why would you even bloat? It's like, yo, niggas, that's crazy how, like, people in a modern day aren't that bright. Whoever friend that was visiting him is fucking retarded, one. Two, niggas over here gloating. Oh, I'm on, I'm on TV. I'm on YouTube. You're being recorded, you fucking retard. Convicts are rather shocked by their sentences, like in the case of Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari. This is Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari, who are facing charges for first-degree murder in Michigan. Seth and Tatiana were the parents of 10-month-old Marianne Welch, who police said died of malnutrition and dehydration due to neglect on August 2nd. Neglect? In Solon Township, Kent County, Michigan. Malnur malnutrition. What is that? Alexa, what is malnutrition? Malnutrition occurs when an organism gets too few or too many nutrients, resulting in health problems. Specifically, it is a deficiency, excess, or imbalance of energy, protein, and other nutrients which adversely affects the body's tissues and form. Hmm. Learn something new every day. Child Protective Services have been involved with the family since... Oh, well, that's when people say they're very well-man-norsh. Well well-man... I, I, I can't say it properly. Hang on, I'm illiterate. After THC was found basically the starving their firstborn child, Mary weighed only eight pounds at the time of her death. Her parents were eight pounds medical help, citing religious reasons and distrust of the medical system. The so why the fuck you ain't feed your baby, bro? Let me guess, y'all niggas was too broke to, to get that, that get that little niggas some food. Family home was found to be unhygienic during the initial investigation, with evidence of vermin, insects, and mold. The doctor who performed the autopsy confirmed. That she said Mary's crib. Possible mold under the mattress. She said the home was infested with flies. She found mice feces in drawers. That Mary was suffering. Shit. Y'all niggas is not from the hoof room. Y'all niggas is not from the hoof room. Y'all never seen some rad robins? Ain't no shame in my game, nigga. I'm from the hood. Kass and I over here doing push-ups, seen a little mouse. Whole world seen that shit. I seen them before. My hood nigga, bro. Shit. From chronic malnutrition 
caused by withholding food. Oh shit, I'm gonna drop my phone. Seth's call to 911 revealed their level of neglect for their daughter. And he said, when you found her, she was already believed to be deceased, right? Yes. And that's when you consulted with a lawyer? Yep. Do you believe she was beyond help already? So these niggas. These niggas. When in court, the prosecutors made sure to highlight just how these niggas are getting sentenced because they, because they neglected their baby. Don't tell me you didn't intend that because you didn't get her little touch out of that crib. You left her in there. You ignored her because she was an inconvenience. The couple was initially charged with felony homicide murder in August 2018. For their baby? Let me see. Initially charged with felony homicide murder in August. Does he have child abuse? Wow. 2018. In June 2020, Seth Welch was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. In 2021, Fusari testified that her husband was abusive and that she was not allowed to take Mary to the doctor. He got very angry with me. He smacked me across the face and he told me that he knows how I... He said, you know what the f I think about doctors. I told you Mary is fine. She's f***ing fine, now drop it. In November 2021, Fusari was sentenced to life without parole for first-degree murder and an additional 15 to 30 years for first-degree child abuse. Yo, why do people, why are people so scared of doctors? I, I honestly want to know. Cause it's like, you know what I think about doctors? Uh, they save lives, nigga? The fuck? The judge pronounced their life sentence. Seth's mouth dropped open in shock and Fusari started crying. For many people, this couple got what they deserved. However, yeah. this wasn't the only time a convict got a sentence that felt like justice. There was the case of Esteban Carpio. Who that? This is Esteban Carpio, who is facing charges for murder in Rhode Island. Carpio is an American murderer who killed a detective at a Providence police station in 2005. Providence police detective... Oh, that nigga look downy. Is he downy? He look like... He look like... Uh, who the fuck is... Someone just drove down the block in a scat pack. Damn, that shit is loud as hell. James L. Allen and another detective were questioning Carpio at the Providence Police Headquarters for accosting an 85-year-old woman, Madeline Gata. According to police reports, the second detective left to the third floor interview room to retrieve some water. It was here where things took a turn for the worst. Carpio had asked for water, and the two detectives that were in there with him, uh, one left to go get the water and locked the door behind him. And they tragically heard Detective Allen say, I think he's going to kill me. He's got my gun. He's going to kill me. By the time they broke it down, the officer was dying, and Carpio had jumped out the window. However, he was recaptured a few minutes later amid struggles with the police. But that was not the end of the drama. Due to the risky jump and struggles with the police, Carpio sustained injuries. When it came time for his sentencing, Carpio came to court wearing a mask designed to keep him from spitting at or biting others. His face was red, bruised, and swollen. When he appeared in court, his family members screamed and accused the police of brutality. The family believed that they forced him to wear the mask to try and hide the brutal revenge beating they gave Carpio behind closed doors. In fact, Policemen do be doing that. They, they, I heard they be doing that, but they only do that if you were to like, you know, kill one of their, you know, one of their officers, because that's damn near fucked up. If you ain't know, police officers, they gotta take a very long time. I think they gotta like go and be in like police school for a very long time, so like they grow bonds with each other. You feel me? So if you like, you feel me? If was if one was to die from you know a thug, they gonna get back in blood type shit. Carpio's aunt went on live TV to say this. Gross police brutality. He was mentally ill and he, and he needed help and we couldn't get it. We tried and tried. And he didn't deserve this. However, he didn't deserve this, bro. He flocked out a Down syndrome detector. What are you saying, woman? Providence Police Chief Dean M. Esserman argued that Carpio's injuries were sustained when he jumped from the third floor interview room and resisted arrest. Oh my God! The FBI later that was pretty high. Police, but it was concluded that they did not use excessive force. No civil rights violation when uh, injuries are um, incident to arrest. Meaning, if he's fighting the police officers, the officers have the right to use whatever force necessary to subdue the subject.
On June 27, 2006, a jury found Carpio guilty of the murder of Detective Allen and the stabbing of Madeline Gata. Despite his plea, why did you stab an old lady? Carpio was sentenced to life in prison without parole. At first, he showed little reaction to his sentence and remained unmoved. However, later, in an attempt to win over the jury, he was heard apologizing for his actions. Every day, I face the facts of what I did and what happened. Carpio claimed he was suffering from mental illness at the time of the crime, but the court didn't entertain the claims. However evil you think Carpio is, how does he compare to Kayla Mendoza, who tweeted this? <laughs> Crazy Hispanic nigga. Too drunk to care. The same night she took two girls' lives in a deadly drunk driving crash. This is Kayla Mendoza. Mr. Mendoza, you want two counts of you on manslaughter. That's count one and count three. Uh, how do you plead it? who is facing charges for double manslaughter, among other charges in Florida. The 20-year-old woman who was not licensed to drive was convicted of the murder of two women while drunk driving in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on November 17, 2013. Before the crash, Mendoza went to a local bar with her manager and colleagues from her job where she drank two fishbowl margaritas. A few hours later, Mendoza got a job where she drank two fishbowl margaritas. Yo, this is how, this is how I know Yo, I might be an uh, like I might be a Norse god. You know how many times where I I've had fishbowl margaritas and I was not drunk, like a full fledged blue Hawaiian. If you know, you know the blue devil or whatever the fuck that shit is called. A few hours later, Mendoza got behind the wheel of a Hyundai Sonata and drove the wrong way on the Sawgrass Expressway. Kayla hopped into her car and went speeding the wrong way down the freeway at more than 80 miles an hour. She collided head on with another car, killing these two beautiful young women, Marissa Catronio and Caitlin Ferrante, both just 21. Mendoza was charged with two counts of DUI manslaughter while impaired, two counts of DUI manslaughter with an unlawful blood alcohol level, two counts of vehicular homicide, and two counts of driving without a license causing death. Mendoza's then boyfriend owned the Hyundai Sonata involved in the crash and explained that the too drunk to care tweet was directed toward him. The too drunk to care tweet was for my boyfriend because he was upset I was out hanging out with them and with Marcelo drinking because he wanted me to be home. The Ferrante and Catronio families filed lawsuits against Mendoza, her boyfriend, the T-Mobile store where Mendoza was employed and the Tijuana taxi company. On May 4, 2015, two months after pleading guilty to two DUI manslaughter charges, Mendoza was sentenced to 24 years in prison. Yeah, she pretty. Mendoza was apologetic throughout the trial. When she heard her sentence, her apology and crying intensified. I don't know how much time passes, I'm going to live with that in my heart every day. After her sentence, Mendoza will also serve six years of probation and is permanently banned from driving a motor vehicle. Mendoza's apologies and remorse showed that she may yet be saved. However, the same cannot be said for Adrian Dunn. This is Adrian Dunn, who is facing charges for murder in San Antonio. Adrian, an ex-convict, was sentenced for the murder of Rakeem Tariq Charles. Police said that Adrian shot Charles in the back during a drug deal in a parking lot on July 16, 2012. To make matters worse, this wasn't even Dunn's first encounter with law enforcement. Into prison twice for possessing a firearm after this murder. He committed another shooting a month before this murder, and he's shown zero remorse. Prosecutors urged the jury to. Bro, it's a gangster, bro. What you want? Like, uh, look at this nigga. He got. Bro, that's not even his hairline, bro. That's a tattoo. The murder. Prosecutor Jason Goss can be of criminal history. The jury to impose the maximum sentence, noting. <laughs> That's not his hairline. That's a tattoo, nigga. She was a fucking thug. Adrian had an extensive criminal history and had shown no remorse for the murder. Prosecutor Jason Goss can be seen here holding the hand of the victim's parents. Before arguing to the jury that a life sentence was necessary to prevent another family from suffering as Charles' family had. Her son who has to suffer and this family who has to suffer because of the defendant. And that's why that's why we're asking you for a life sentence. If you thought the crimes were horrendous, wait till you see how Adrian reacted to his sentence. Throughout the trial, Adrian showed no remorse and couldn't have been less concerned. He was found guilty of the crime. Still, his attorney argued that a sentence of 35 to 40 years would be more appropriate. His reasoning? I'll give Adrian a chance to go into prison 
and try to make something of himself so that when he gets out, if he ever gets out, he can try to be an asset to our community. However, the jury deliberated for just two hours before returning with a sentence of life in prison. As the jury's decision was read out, Adrian began to fight with Bexar County Sheriff's deputies attempting to escort him from the courtroom. Dunn's behavior was marked by profanity and outbursts. He was eventually subdued and removed from the court. Adrian's case can be termed a drug case gone bad. However, while he remains stoic and combative, there are other convicts who break down in court and feel genuine remorse for their actions, like in the case of Ellis Nelson Ortiz Nieves. This is Ellis Nelson Ortiz Nieves. The bruises, some of the bruises were in the shape of a belt buckle. Man, I ain't gonna let you make, I ain't gonna let you sit here and say no, no crazy shit about me, man. No, man, because he just, he, he stay in shit he don't even know, man. He was facing charges for the murder of an infant in Michigan. The cause of death was physical abuse, which was later ruled as murder. Niggas hitting me, kids. The four-year-old boy, Giovanni Mejias, was the son of Ortiz Nieves' girlfriend, Sonia Hernandez. Sonia claimed she had no involvement in the crime. However, her neighbor had a different side of the story. Sonia was well aware. She was well, well aware of what was happening because she told him that was his responsibility to whoop them. Ortiz Nieves denied abusing the boy, but the judge and prosecutors believe his beating the child resulted in his death. Kent County deputies report Take that dumb bitch to prison. Gaines Township trailer where Ortiz Nieves was left to care for several children under 11. It was here that they found Giovanni several? on the kitchen floor. An autopsy showed that Giovanni died from internal bleeding caused by an abdominal tear, which would have been caused by an adult, not a child. During the trial, Kent County Circuit Court Judge Mark Trusock can be heard condemning Ortiz Nieves' actions, reprimanding him in very strong words, and insisting that he should never be allowed out of prison. You are the lowest form of human life that I've been able to observe or see. That you committed this murder and that you beat this little boy to death. The judge described the injuries suffered by Giovanni before his death, causing Ortiz Nieves to become upset and struggle with deputies, who had to remove him from the courtroom. You had put cigarettes out on this poor little child. There was evidence of that from the pictures. Anybody says anything? Ignorant Hispanic niggas, man. Ortiz Nieves was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole and was given a sentence of 80 to 150 years for first-degree child abuse. Ortiz Nieves' reaction might suggest that he is guilty. However, this wasn't the only time a convict reacted emotionally to their sentence. There is the case of Jordan Fuss. This is Jordan Fuss. I'm oh, sorry. I wish it was... What he did, what he did. I did not deserve it. I did. Facing charges for manslaughter in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The 22-year-old was found guilty of DUI manslaughter in a 2014 crash that claimed the life of six-year-old Santiago Geraldo. Fuss, shaking uncontrollably as he entered the courtroom with his family, had a blood alcohol level of 0.21%, which is more than twice the legal limit. He was traveling over 90 miles per hour on Sterling Road when he crashed his 2004 Infiniti G35 into another- G35? You crashed it. You crashed it. Yo, this nigga- Yo, I can't front- it really be the infinity drivers, bro. Not even trying to joke around and shit. Hell, y'all niggas need to stop speeding, man. When I get my shit, I ain't gonna lie. It's really just really a, a correct certain time to be speeding, bro. Matter of fact, never mind, bro. It's not even good to speed, bro. Drive at 60 miles or 35, man. Drive at the speed limit, man. Y'all niggas is wilding, bro. No funny shit, bro. Another vehicle at Davy Road it's just bugging, bro. Night on October 3rd, especially, 2014. Yo, cuz, especially if you got kids in the back seat. Like, what's up with you? Like, what? This is bugging. Prosecutors had sought the maximum sentence for the crime. Fuss How was he alive? Reduced sentence, <clears throat> stating that his client had been so remorseful that he had contemplated suicide. However, prosecutors had been so remorseful that he had contemplated. Oh. That was oh he was driving the G thirty seven, the ba the baby would the baby wasn't in his car it was in the other person's car okay he said that his client was going to prison. Related suicide. 
However, prosecutors stated that Fuss had admitted to using alcohol and smoking marijuana since the crash. The Geraldo family cried in court. Niggas is about to use marijuana. Bro, you were speeding. Getting high has nothing to do with speeding. Maybe drinking, yeah. But the defense argued for a lighter sentence. Santiago's father took the stand and had this to say while staring directly into Jordan's eyes. Hi. May God forgive you, because I can't. You didn't just take my son's life, you took mine too. <laughs> During the trial, Foss could be seen apologizing to the victim's family in tears. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nigga, no you not. You over here speeding in a G35. Girlfriend whom he met online after the crash. Then came the verdict as Jordan was sentenced to 14 years in prison. Court imposes the lowest permissible prison sentence allowable by Florida's criminal punishment code, 14.625 years. He continued crying as he learned his fate. I love you guys so much. I love you. Fuss might have learned his lesson. However, some crimes require more than being remorseful, like in the case of Antonio Barbo, a 13-year-old who murdered his own grandmother for money to buy pizza and pot. This is Antonio Barbo. Who money to buy pizza, pot, pizza and weed. Gang, you could have just got a fucking nine to five. Oh my God, bro. Who is facing charges for murder in Wisconsin. 14 years old, Barbo was in court for the murder of his 78-year-old great-grandmother, Barbara Olson. Rather than trying to explain Have I seen this before? what this 14-year-old monster did, let's hear it directly from the mouth of the killer. I tried to uh, scare her to get money and then use force if needed. Bro, you, well, how old is he? Lesson, however, some crimes require more than being remorseful. Like in the case of Antonio Barbo, a 13-year-old 13. Little nigga can't get no job. Shit, where there's a will, there's a way. There's always a way to make money. Who murdered his own grandmother for money to buy pizza and pot. This is Antonio Barbo, who is facing charges for murder in Wisconsin. 14 years old, Barbo was in court for the murder of his 78-year-old great-grandmother, Barbara Olson. Rather than trying to explain what this 14-year-old monster did, let's hear it directly from the mouth of the killer. I tried to uh, scare her to get money and then use force if needed. Um, and I Finally, that movie over, bro. We've been watching. We've been watching some great content for the past twenty-four minutes. Where you been at? But that movie wasn't even scary, bro. I only jump scared like two times. That shit wasn't. It wasn't better than the. It wasn't better than the. It wasn't. It wasn't scarier. Scarier than the first non movie. The, mon the first one was that one was scary it, that shit was whack I'm not gonna lie to you that had a good good concept I guess but Attack, uh, I guess to kill the boys hid weapons in their what? before uh, um, an attack, uh, I guess to kill the boys hid weapons in their pants before catching a ride to be dropped off at Antonio's grandma's house. What happened when the boys got inside is shocking. He knew I was on the run and she said she was gonna call my mom. He nodded and then I took the first swing. Okay, and when you said you took the first swing is with the hand axe? Yes, sir. Antonio also Okay, and when you said you took the first Hand axe? Why do they call it a hand axe? Just call it an axe. First swing is with the hand axe. Yes, sir. Antonio also said that he tried to put his grandmother's body in a car trunk, but when he couldn't, he left it in the garage and covered it with a blanket. Judy, Barbara's granddaughter, was the person who discovered the body. She quickly ran to a neighbor's house to call the police. Uh, please send an ambulance from the police. My mother is laying in the garage and there's a lot of blood and there's a blanket over her head. There's how a lot did of the, blood. How did, the towel, how did the blanket get over her? I have no idea. And how old is your mother? She is um, 78. And is she breathing? 
I don't know. I can't look. The blanket is over her head and I can't look. Okay, can we here with you? I hope you got the neighbor. Okay, can the neighbor check if she's breathing? Oh, you don't have to go and look. You don't have to go. If your you neighbor can just go and check if she's breathing. Bitch, why does that matter? Do what the woman asked. Yo, why do they do they really ask this? Okay. They would like you to are you sending somebody? I'm working on it. I need to know if she's breathing. Well, do Why do you need to know if she's breathing, nigga? Take the, her take her word for it. Left frantic to call for help and try and save Barbara. Antonio and his accomplice used the $155 to get high and enjoy some pizza. During the trial, you can see Barbo reading a statement, apologizing for the killing and asking for forgiveness. Barbo said he regretted his actions. Regardless of his apologies, Barbo was sentenced to life imprisonment as he continued crying. However shocking you think Barbo's case was, LaShirley Morris's case gives it a run for its money. This is LaShirley Morris, who is facing- Look at his ratchet bitch. In Atlanta. LaShirley is accused of killing three-year-old Kwan Mason. The cause of death was physical abuse with a baseball bat, which was later ruled as a homicide. The incident occurred October 21st, 2017, when Morris beat the boy as Bro. punishment. But what punishment could be so severe that a child is beaten to death? Well, listen here. And then a violent death for taking a cupcake from the kitchen. A child who was inside the home witnessed the attack and reported the events to the police. He's not awake, he's not alert. No, he's not alert. He was breathing at first. Now he's not breathing. Morris's sister. Glendria Morris was also charged in the child's death because she did not intervene during the incident. The victim, Kwan Mason, lived with Glendria Morris. Lobo just went to the pastry and shit. Mother started hitting on him with a bat. Oh, what? Who was also his legal guardian at the time of the alleged killing. Oh, this isn't, that's not his mother. Okay, never mind. Wait, is it? Probably wasn't listening. Kwan and three of his siblings entered the Division of Family and Child Services care after their mother was arrested on a reckless conduct charge in March 2017. Mm. According to DFCS records, DFCS after their mother was arrested. Oh, that was her mother on a reckless conduct charge. Like, no, for children. Why do people take their anger on children? I, I can't comp I can't fathom that. I don't comprehend. Mason allegedly left her children. It's almost as if I'm like stupid or something. I just can't comprehend that. Malone had anger issues and abused the children. Geraldine Mason, the victim's mother, was released in April 2017 and reunited with one of her children, but requested temporary guardianship for Kwan and his twin brother, according to DFCS records. In court, the 911 call LaShirley made showed that the baby was already dead before first responders arrived. LaShirley Morris was found guilty of murder, aggravated assault, and cruelty to children charges and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after pleading guilty to murder. LaShirley's actions were horrible. However, Hoskins' reaction seemed to top it. This is Jaleel Hoskins who is facing charges for murder in Michigan for the murder of his girlfriend, Latrice Mays. Wow. Mays, a mother of five, disappeared in March of 2013. Her sudden and mysterious absence led to her family wanting answers and ultimately a nationwide search. Initially, Hoskins denied being involved with the murder whatsoever. I have nothing to do with the murder. I have, I have nothing to do with the disappearance. However, Hoskins quickly changed his plea when he heard the testimonials and evidence being argued against him. First, Hoskins' own cousin took the stand. After the, Nigga backdoored him. After the domestic or whatever happened, uh, I guess I guess she after they left, she told, she said she was gonna tell the police that he stabbed her uh, while doing it. Doing what? Killing. I guess he choked her or something. Did he say he choked her? Yes. Then, one of Hoskins... Yo, nigga. Nigga, cousin backdoored him. Shit, go to riddance, nigga. Hoskins' close friends took the stand. He said, I did her. I need her. I need some help. She... I can't carry her by myself. Lastly, on the same day of the murder, 
Police dash cam footage showed them responding to a call Latrice had made in which she claimed Hoskins was abusing her. After hearing the piles of evidence against him, Hoskins was forced to change his plea. Hoskins pleaded guilty to the murder of Latrice Mays and also admitted to tampering with the evidence. Hoskins, a habitual criminal offender, decided to take Mays' life because he was afraid she would report his assault on the father of two of her children to the police. Hoskins was initially charged with open murder, which carries a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Mays was afraid she would not regain custody of two of her children if she did not cooperate with law enforcement in the assault against the children's father. Hoskins was given a maximum life sentence in prison as a repeat offender. Hey man, ladies, y'all be safe with who y'all decide to make y'all 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 baby y'all baby fathers or whatever, whoever y'all marry, bro. Funny shit. These niggas be wildin'. I'll back door you, you will never get the chance to, nigga. Fuck. He attacked the podium before being restrained by police. <clears throat> Hoskins' reaction was crazy. However, nothing could prepare you for the reaction of Ricky okay. Hand. This is Ricky Hand. A Springfield man possibly facing new charges tonight after he throws urine and feces on his attorney in court. Did you just give me 40 years? He was facing charges for multiple robberies in Ohio. Ricky had been on a robbing spree. How he threw urine and feces? He local convenience stores late at night and running off with some extra cash. However, this crime spree would soon come to an end the night he decided to try his luck with John's drive through In the footage here, we can find the owner of the shop beginning to close down for the night. Little did this small business owner know, there was an armed Ricky Hand lurking the building. As Ricky began to make his way to the door, he's greeted by the owner who is armed and begins firing to scare Ricky off. After this failed robbery attempt, the shop- This pussy ass nigga. Yo, you gonna try to rob niggas and there's a person right there? Was that not a real person? The owner called the police oh. to inform them that there had just been a robbery attempt that resulted in a man getting shot. Yeah, this is John's drive through West Main Street. A uh, guy just tried to rob me and I shot him. He ran out the back door. Okay, is he injured? I, I think I hit him. It would only take a couple of days for Ricky to... Bro wasn't having none of that. ...in order to treat the bullet wounds he left John's drive through with that night. It was here police arrested and questioned him about that night. Oh, bro gave him a body shot and left that nigga to have a, uh, the little baggie. I forgot what that shit was called. It's like a little pouch that, that it got to be in your body forever to help you, you know, shit and piss and shit. I did try to rob John's driver. He got shot three times. I did the crime. I ain't gonna lie. I did, I just wanted to let you know. When the case took to the courtroom, Hand was sentenced to 40 years. The reason the judge gave Ricky such a long sentence is because they were also able to prove he was guilty for carrying out a string of robberies across Springfield, Ohio. Hand lost it when he heard that he would spend decades in jail. Hand reached for bottles of his own excrement and urine, which were hidden in an arm sling, and threw it at his lawyer in court. You can see Hand reach for the bottles of filth. As a result of the courtroom incident, Han was charged with an additional five counts of harassment with bodily substances, one for his attorney and four for the deputies present. Nah, that nigga, nigga's about to get that nigga Glock Dookie. He's also charged with obstructing official business and retaliation. If you thought these reactions were shocking, you'd be amazed at this video of dangerous killers who wanted the death penalty. What? Oh my God. That's crazy, bro. A lot of crazy niggas in this world, man. It's a crazy world we live in. That nigga future said, but I'm gonna keep on living. Shit. Yo, y'all let me know. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. No funny shit. Back at it again. We might watch this one right here. See ya. See that for the next time, all right? I love y'all. Thought it was none, got none for free. So you ain't getting none from me. I'm married to Dunn and Dio for the fee. In the trash bar, pushing the pee. In the floor, see, dropping the G. 100 o'clock TP, geek on the beat. Yeah, look. Those who don't hear me, fam.